so you're going to see I'm going to run through a slideshow just to give you a little bit of uh, more visual as to what's going on. But let's first talk about some of the terminology. Um, because you know a lot of people like to use the terms in EDI that uh, uh, make it seem as though it's a lot bigger um, and a lot harder to do than truly what it is. So I'd like to try to break things down and make it easy for you. So one of the terms that you're going to hear people talk about is you're going to hear people talk about 3PL. 3PL is a third party logistics is what 3PL stands for. So in third party logistics, what does that mean? That means it's an entity or an organization that's basically storing your goods that you need shipped to a prospective location. So shipped to a warehouse or to a customer's house or any of those things. So the third party logistics is a lot of times storing your goods that you found a sale for and moving those goods or sending those goods to a different spot. So person's house, a business, any of those type of things. So third party logistics handles the storage of your product and getting your product shipped to a location. Not meaning that they're always going to use their own trucks or anything like that to move it. Because what ends up happening then is you have a carrier. So third party logistics could be a shipper. They're shipping the product. Your business could also be the shipper if you have your own warehouse. So you could be defined as the shipper of a product. The carrier is who is moving that product, who is taking that product from the warehouse and delivering it to a business, to like a Home Depot, a Lowe's, any of those type of things, or delivering it to somebody's house. So carrier, we have is the person that is or individual company that is actually taking the goods and putting it on the truck and delivering it to an entity. So that's where we have those two pieces. Now you might have another thing that's thrown out there. It's called LTL, which stands for less than truck load. So if you're shipping a box truck and that box truck is half full, well, that's an LTL. That's a less than truck load. Or you also have FTL, full truckload. So a lot of times when you're shipping pallets of goods, um, you're doing full truckload, so FTL. So hopefully they can get that gives you a little bit of an understanding as to what those different uh, abbreviations stand for and how to, how to handle them throughout the system. So if we go ahead and we're looking at, at what we have here is we have a shipper. This shipper uh, has a product that they need to send and they're asking or requesting a carrier to send it. So in EDI, they're going to use a motor car carrier load tender, or also known as a 204. It'll be sent either via AS2 or, or FTP from the shipper's system to the carrier system. In response, the carrier is going to go ahead and send back a response to a load tender, which is a 990. So that's saying, hey, yeah, we can take that product and we can go ahead and we, we'd love to deliver it for you. The next thing that's going to come about is you're going to send, because they've already, now they've picked up the product. The carrier's picked up the product and they're now moving it. So you're going to request from the carrier shipment status. Hey, wh where's my product at? What, what have you done with it? Where, where's it at along the, the trail, along the mileage that you have to move that product? In response, there's going to be a shipment status, uh, EDI 214. There could be multiple along the path of delivering that product, just to keep you updated. Um, some carriers, if you have product that's moving over, you know, takes three days to send it, maybe every 24 hours they give you a shipment status or maybe every hour. It all depends on the carrier system and how they're gonna interact with you. At the end of it, once that product's delivered to its final destination, well, guess what? That carrier wants to get paid. So they're gonna send you a motor carrier freight details and invoice, which is also known as a 210 document. So, as you can see, the documents that are moving along those pathways, we're doing a 204, the 990. You're also going to be looking at dealing with a 213, a 214, and a 210. Um, if you have any questions, you have anything that comes up, some 
inquiries that you want to get a little bit further in depth with, don't hesitate to reach out. That's what we're here to do. We're here to help you.